means to you? I, I'm, I'm just so grateful. I'm very grateful. Um, without my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I would have never made it this far. And I just want to acknowledge Him and everything that I am and everything that I do. Um, I want to thank everybody out there who prayed for me. Uh, I felt their energy and, um, and I'm very grateful. Uh, this, this fight means a lot. It means a lot. Uh, I'm humbled by it. And uh, it just goes to show that you know, no matter what happens in life, if we just continue to strive, put one foot in front of the other, that, that, that the sky's the limit and this, this world really can't be your oyster. Um, I've never felt more at peace. I've never felt more happy. Last night at my, at my, uh, my, my fight dinner, I almost cried. I felt like I was living in a dream. I looked around and I, I just saw so many leaders. A lot of my friends these days are great business owners. They're great dads. They're great friends. They're men of, of substance. Um, I, I got really great men and women in my life. My fiance, my beautiful daughters, my fiance's support system, her friends. Um, yeah, I'm just really happy. I'm really happy. I feel like my, my whole world is a byproduct of uh, the people that are in my life. So I just, just want to thank every single one of, uh, of my supporters, my fans. Um, without them, I'd be, I wouldn't be much. We love you, Mom. <laughs> love you too. Can you talk about the feeling as you stepped in there tonight, right? I mean, it's been three years. Uh, you're up a weight class against a very big dude. I mean, was there a different nervous kind of energy than usual when you got in there? I, I mean, it's real game has a great physique. Let's, let's, <laughs> we all know that. The guy looks like a bodybuilder. Um, but, you know, my coach just reminded me, John, you know, Tiago Santos had a really awesome physique. Uh, Vitor Belfort had muscles in his earlobes. <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, and so it was just like, you know, it's, it's not about the competition. Uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's, about, it's about heart, it's about grit, it's about wanting to be out there. And uh, my buddy Brian McKenzie, he said something to me right before I went out to the cage. He said, he said, uh, like, neurologically, a, uh, a cow and a lion, they feel the same emotions when they're fighting. They're both pumped up with adrenaline. But he said the only difference is the lion actually wants to be there. And um, it was a perfect thing to say to me in the moment because I was nervous. And he, had, he reminded me, bro, it's normal. And uh, do you want to be here? And at that moment, I was like, oh, yeah, I want to be here. And I want more. And um, I just went out there with a very offensive mindset and uh, got it done. I'm not sure if I answered your question or not. I'm just talking. <laughs> That's all right. And, and tell me, I mean, obviously we knew the wrestling skills would be there, but um, at heavyweight, you hadn't wrestled at heavyweight before. So I guess how did it feel in there? Was it more difficult? Did you feel the strength as an issue when you went through the wrestling sequences? I, I really do believe that I, I'm one of the strongest heavyweights uh, in the heavyweight division. When I was a light heavyweight, people would say all the time, John is a lot stronger than what he appears to be. Um, every, almost every opponent you know, can say that. And now that I've, that I've been powerlifting, and, uh, and living a martial arts lifestyle, I really, truly believe that I'm the strongest heavyweight in the heavyweight division. There's guys that can, that can do a lot of things probably more than me, guys can squat more than me, bench more than me, but when it comes to just, uh, just total strength and muscular endurance and knowing how to pace yourself and knowing how to use endurance, I, I believe I'm one of the most fit athletes in the game, whether I look like it or not. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for the future. I think some of my best performances are going to be coming within the next year or so. Well, like you said, performances, so that means more than one. But I guess you made it clear that you said you want Stipe next. Uh, uh, a timeline? Is there anything on your You have a date circled on the calendar yet? Or do you have an idea like what would make the most sense for you? I, I got to talk to my coaching staff and see how, you know, what they think. But we took zero damage tonight, and uh, I'm getting right back to practice. My buddy Maurice Green has a fight coming up in the PFL. Um, uh, Jorgen DeCastro has a fight coming up in the PFL. And uh, I owe it to my team to, to uh, take the back seat and be the training partner. And that's exactly what we got to do. We get right back to work. And uh, I believe in my next fight, I'll, I'll go into it with a different level of confidence, an even higher level of confidence. I believe that I'm going to look really great. 
I'm going to have even higher endurance than I had today, which is going to be hard to beat because I'm in really great condition. And uh, these guys in the back acting like nuts. <laughs> I can't take. <laughs> I can't take you guys anywhere. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the, the next fight is gonna be awesome. Um, I, say it, I say it respectfully to Stipe. I would take time off from being a firefighter right now. And I mean that with all due respect. Um, my whole world is gonna be focused on him. This is the biggest opportunity in my life to beat the heavyweight GOAT. And I'm gonna give it everything I got. Absolutely everything I got. Stipe's talking about the fact that he's heavier than me right now. You know, his head, his head's already in the wrong spot if he thinks weightlifting is gonna beat me. He'll never be younger than he is right now. He'll never be faster. And um, I'm going to not only beat Sleepy Miocic, I'm gonna finish Sleepy Miocic before the championship rounds.